Welcome back to more Metroid Prime, everyone. We have the Morph Ball right up here, so let's go ahead and grab that, why don't we? Or not. Yeah, of course it wasn't going to be that easy. We got beetles protecting it for some reason. Why beetles would be protective of a Morph Ball, I don't really get. But, alright, let's go ahead and take all these guys out. Spamming the B button, since we can't do much else at the moment. And again, strafing is going to be your friend right here. We didn't really have room to strafe at all against the ram wasps, and it wouldn't have been that useful, to be honest. But it's definitely going to be how you're going to survive in Metroid Prime. You're going to be moving around a lot. Because, of course, a moving target is going to be much more difficult to hit than a uh, static target would be. So you want to stay moving around and not be in one place all the time. But holy crap, there's a lot of beetles. It's like this is a hive or something. Like the other ones were just venturing out. And they seem to be a tad bit hardier than the regular beetles as well. Maybe that's just me. Alright, one more here. Alright, that should do it, huh? Anything else? Ah, of course, the mother beetle. Or something to that effect. I don't really know what it's called. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say the glowing, swelling red thing right there is its weakness. But let's go ahead and see. The plated beetle, a well-armored burrowing insect, vulnerable only in the rear abdomen. All right, well, let's do it. So, if you didn't want to strafe around and hit it before, well, you're definitely going to have to do it now. <laughs> yeah, it's going to give you the tutorial right here. And this is when I really wish I had the charge beam, but hey, what you going to do? Try not to get hung up on the side of the walls right there like I am. Because then, uh, you're not going to be able to get behind it, you won't be able to hit it very effectively. Of course, you're going to want to stay close to it too, so, um, you're not too far away. Then it makes your shots more inaccurate when you do finally get behind it. As you don't have a terrible amount of time whenever it charges at you to get behind it. I have to say, though, this is a very strange evolutionary concept right here. You'd think the plated beetle would get a plate all around its body, but, oh uh, well, I guess not. And with that, because I guess the plated beetle was defending the wall or something, we can finally get that morph boss. Let's go and get it. Or, if I don't lock up on the wall, that is. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> All right, Morph Ball acquired. <laughs> Not the Morphing Ball, the, the Morph Ball. Of course, this is just like it was at the start of the game here. We can press the uh, C button on the nunchuck here to go into Morph Ball mode. I get a nice little third-person perspective. I think I just got to glaze over that in the first episode there. And I think you move a tad bit faster when you're in Morph Ball form as well. So, all right, let's just lay a bomb right here. And Oh, yeah, no bombs. Well, that's just unfortunate now, isn't it? Okay, now that we have the Morph Ball, we can, of course, go back to that place where that energy tank was and go on from there. So, again, name of the game. Get your power up, go on from there. Get on out of here. So, those uh, very puny five missiles right here. I guess I'll go ahead and say that I think I am going to be going for 100% completion right here. I've just been in a 100% completion kind of mood since the Kingdom Hearts series, and I think I know how to handle it really well. Uh, well, not really well, but comparatively better than I used to. Hey, back in the earliest days of my channel, I would try to do 100%, but I would try to show you guys trying to get every power up just during the course of the regular episodes and in the regular game. But now I know that it's probably best just to have a collect-a-thon at the end where I show off the location of all the missiles I missed and just briefly show you guys how I got them. So we're probably going to be doing that. And again, I'm not super familiar with this game, so I might glance or glaze over an expansion here or there, something like that. But I am going to be trying to get them all. Probably have to use a walkthrough at the very end. But yeah, we're going to be going for the best ending right there, or the true ending, I suppose. So, all right, now that we're here, we can get into our morph ball and... Oh yeah, no bombs. What good is a morph ball without the morph ball bombs, man? I still feel completely neutered over here. I guess that's the point, though. We're not supposed to feel very powerful at this point. I mean, just look at our scrub suit right now. We're not even in the best of shape on that front either. Let's keep on going through here, I'm tracing all this steady ground. And of course, you know, it brings up the decade-old question, like, is backtracking actually a good thing, even in a Metroid game? And, you know, where the world is as rich and as interesting as Talon 4 and its various areas are, I definitely think it's worth it right here. 
And I have to say, the motion controls are quite good. I'm just having some problems right here with uh, where I'm angled in my seat, just kind of pointing it towards the sensor bar right here, which I have on top of my TV. So if you ever see um, everything kind of desyncing, you're kind of seeing like the cancel button in the middle or something like that. Well, that's why. All right, let's move onward, shall we? Finally, back where we started right here. I think the music does change the further we get into the area. I think it gets a bit more progressive, and more instruments are added, more beats are added, something cool like that. Oh, and here we have, I guess, something new to the Metroid series here. These are like Morph Ball segments, where we go all 2D, and we have to navigate through a small maze as a Morph Ball. I really like these, kind of a return to form from the old games, and got a break from the core gameplay as well. Of course, we can't do much right now, because we're just a Morph Ball. All we can do is move around, so <laughs> that first one there, not too complex. I would say also, if you ever get hung up on a wall or something like that, or the camera isn't exactly working with you right now, I would say just go into Morph Ball form here, you'll get a kind of a better view of your surroundings. Now let's check out what this elevator is real quick. Access to the Magmore Caverns, huh? Well, something tells me we don't want to get to the Magmore Caverns quite yet, so let's go through here. It doesn't look like we can be quite, uh, look, doesn't look like we can be here quite yet either, so. I don't know, I'll go ahead and destroy these nests for posterity, because I hate these wasps. Screw you. Alright, now we'll take down all the small fries. Die, 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 die. Anyone else? Got one more here. Hmm. Oh wait, we still got a nest right here. Boom! One missile to the face to take those guys down. Alright, what do we have here? Magnetic rail system track detected. It appears to be active. Spider ball technology required to access the track. The spider ball from Metroid 2? Hmm. I guess we'll keep that in mind for the future now, won't we? Now, the main reason I wanted to come in here was, well, of course, we can't progress here, but... Oh yeah, it was this little guy. <laughs> no, not really. It's an Ultra Energy. It's a full energy tank, so you see one of these, definitely want to pick them up. But I believe there is a Chozo lore here. Yep, here it is. The crisis of this dying land echo in our ears as we Chozo watch the great poison seep even further into the living pulse of the planet. The dark energy sinks into the trees and waters, devouring all life. Peaceful beasts die by the thousands. Some creatures survive, but their forms grow as twisted and evil as the force that fell from the sky. Many of these mutated monstrosities remain small enough to do little harm, but others grow enormous and threaten our very existence. One such beast defiles our sacred foundation, disgorging poison from its foul form, replacing pure, flowing water with cascades of creeping death. Even in the face of such horror, we chose to do not turn in fear. We are all that stands in the way of this great poison, and it is our duty to contain it. That's a bit more ominous than your other entries there, Chozo. Like, holy crap. Alright, well, nothing we can do here, I suppose. I'm gonna try not to get too lost in this playthrough, but I think it might be inevitable from time to time. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, another Morph Ball slot, it would seem. Let's hop out in there, shall we? Yeah, this is what I'm saying right here. You get a bit better view of everything when you're in the, the Morph Ball form here, so... I don't know, really cool of the developers to bring it back in 3D. You know, this is the same problem... Well, I wouldn't even call it a problem. The same obstacle would be a better word that, of course, games like Super Mario 64 and Zelda Ocarina of Time face. How do you bring an established duty franchise into 3D? Now, of course, it was pretty believable that Nintendo themselves were able to do it for Mario and Zelda in a very convincing and very invigorating way, but just the fact that Retro was able to do the same for Samus? That's pretty remarkable, man. I saw another Chorzo lore over there. I think we have two, maybe? No, just this one. And, of course, we have this, uh... Missile expansion in the middle right here, but we can't get to it right now because, again, heh, no more fall bomb. Okay, let's check out this Chozo lore before we head on. The future is a vague thing, ever-changing and always in doubt. Even if we Chozo could gain the ability to foresee the future, it would be a hollow gift, for we could never hope to control what is yet to occur. The Foundation is an example of this. The day may come when its water dries up, and there is nothing we could do to stop such a tragedy. But we do know this. Unlike the uncertain flow of water, the power of our own will is strong and enduring. The will of the Chozo will never run dry. So, if you guys haven't figured it out quite yet, we're not going to be seeing these Chozo lores in chronological order. In fact, I think I can pull up the menu right here. 
go to our logbook. Yeah, go to Chizalor. And here you can view them in chronological order right here, you see. As you can see, there are quite a few Chizo, uh lore uh, entries here. And so when we get all of them, I don't know, you may want to read them in chronological order to get the whole story and things like that. I think it's kind of cool to read them out of chronological order because you get like really creepy, disturbing entries like we saw about the Great Poison back there. But yeah. Uh, kind of a much more sophisticated version of the Secret Ansem reports in Kingdom Hearts, I would say, where you get a lot of necessary backstory through those reports right there. Except these are entirely optional, you're not going to find them uh, just by yourself. It looks like we have stumbled across an energy tank. Huh, imagine that. Alright, sweet, we've got another energy uh, tank down right there, so... Alright, I've kind of forgotten where we're supposed to go from there, because I thought that was going to lead to our next power-up, but uh, I guess not. Let's see what goes over here. What is over here, I should say. Ah, come on, die! Die! God, these wasps are everywhere! I hope they're not throughout the entirety of the game, because I'm getting very bad Scourge Hive flashbacks! I want to get Scourge Hive flashbacks when I'm playing Metroid Prime. Ah, uh, Scourge Hive was not a bad game, though. Oh, yeah. You got to destroy this. Always destroy the nest before you get a wasp. I don't think they'll spawn infinitely, but you'll have to take down a lot more than you normally would. And that's not a good thing. There's no experience in this game, so you're just wasting your time. In fact, I'm wasting my time right now. I want to go through this door. Yeah. Forget you. Bye. Ugh, oh, scarabs. Everything on this planet wants to kill Samus. They want her dead. Okay, of course, we couldn't have come through here if we didn't have our handy dandy more fall right here, so good thing we got it. Quite invigorating, just kind of zoom around at the speed of sound. But, uh, more little glowy thingies right here, it would seem. Uh, again, wouldn't recommend trying to take those guys down, because uh, this room is very poorly lit as it is. Alright, I think I remember how to get this missile expansion right here. Yeah, get out of the way! Out of the way! I think... Oh, no, wait, we can't do it quite yet, because this is poison water. I think if I get in here, I'll just hurry. Yeah, yeah, it just hurts. Um, later, we're going to want to come in and jump into that thing right there, but of course we can't do it right now because of this poison water. All right, another Chozo lore. Getting tons of these in these episodes. Or these first few episodes, I should say. The surges of negative energy brought by the meteor far exceed our expectation. We Chozo have yet to find a way to rid ourselves of the great poison. All we can do now is seal it away and wait for the day when a power to purify the poison appears. However, it is already impossible to collect all the pieces of the Great Poison, It is a, as it has already spread, seeping to the planet and hardening. Wow! So it looks like the Great Poison came via Meteor. Boy, that's all like Genova from Final Fantasy VII, Deoxys from Pokemon. When a meteor crashes into Earth with something parasitic, you know you're in for a bad time, just like these guys. Now, of course, there's another classic Metroid enemy here, the Shriek Bat. I believe these were in the original, one of the first enemies you would see right after ye old Zuma right there. So bring about tons of classic enemies right here. And except uh, they don't dive bomb you from the very top, they'll actually come here dive bomb you from forward. So you actually have a shot to take them down. Let's take this guy out. Ah, great. A pillar room. This is exactly what I wanted. Let's take a look at the map right here. Yeah, I think I know where I want to go. We want to go to the right. Oh, well, it's to the right. Oh, yeah, we got these tentacles right here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and scan this guy. I tell you, this is something kinky just waiting to happen. The Reaper Vine, huh? Rock dwelling tentacles. Yeah. Oh, it takes one power beam to their disgusting eye right there to take it out. So we could climb up here, but I don't think I want to do that just yet. I want to make a safe jump to get to that door right there that we can actually open. And I don't think I want to scan the relics quite yet either. We're just going to go on over here. We'll climb uh, this area soon enough, dear viewer. Don't worry. Take you out. Take you out. I believe these guys have a fair bit of knockback too, so they'll knock you off the platform if you don't have very good footing. I go through here. Get these really cool visor effects. It's just little details like that that really add to the immersion, you know? Okay, where are we now? I think there's a save room back here, if my memory serves correctly. Go ahead and jump into here. I think we get a missile recharge too whenever we get a save station here. I kinda forgot, I think we do. No, we don't, we just get an energy fully replenished. That's in, uh. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Is it second prime? I don't know if the Prime games do that, where they just kind of combine, they make all the save stations just like Samus' gunship. Uh, kind of forget if they do that or not, but... 
I uh, guess we'll see as we get to the other games now, won't we? Yeah, of course, we could go vertical all again, but I don't think I have the jumping ability to do that just yet. So we're going to take out these shrooms and head into this door right through here. Oh, looks like a place where those eyeballs would be. I forgot what these things are. That which fouls the waters seeks the sun. I think that's not exactly Chozo lore, but it's just kind of like foreboding Chozo advice. Oh, crap! Didn't even see those guys hanging from right there. And I think we have another Chozo lore in here somewhere else. I don't know, I'm not seeing it at the moment. The Chozo lore can be kind of difficult to locate. It's glowing stuff on the wall, but... Oh yeah, another cool thing the visor can do, the scan visor. Never mind, I guess that's in Prime 3 Corruption. Where it'll tell you if a breakable wall can be broken by something. Uh, of course, I guess they're not going to do that right here, so... Never mind! Uh, let's blast open this thing with the missile. Ah, this is the room I was looking for. Alright, let's go ahead and explore a bit here. Can't kill the tentacles, I think you can just make them retreat back into their own hiding spot right there. And I believe we want to look for some relics here. Yeah, there's one on the mushroom right here. Go ahead and scan that guy. This runic symbol has been activated. I think we need to find four of these throughout this room. I always have trouble with this one room. I always, like, herp derp and forget the location of one of them. Alright, well, there's number two. I believe there's four in all. Oh, four in total, huh? Yep. Well, we got two on the bottom level. I would hazard a guess that the other two will be on the top level. Go back in. Come on. Alright, there we go. I just have to say, I like how the jump in this game is kind of floaty. It does make platforming a bit easier, because, you know, the first-person perspective is really not the best for platforming, but you kind of have to have it in a Metroid game, because there's been a fair bit of that in the future, or in the past. There's going to be some in the future, of course, but um, they want to stay true again. Um, oh, man, I did forget where these are. Crap! I always have trouble in this one room, and it's, like, super easy, and I don't know why I derp so hard. It's always the last one that I can't find anywhere. Alright, so we need one more somewhere. Hmm. Perhaps it's on top? I think it's like on the wall somewhere that I'm missing. I guess I just get like too distracted by the tentacle guys right here to really pay attention. Let's see, where are you? Got you, got you. You would think there would be another one on the wall somewhere. I just don't see it, guys. I guess I'm gonna have to wander around for a bit. Ah, there it is. I think I see it. Yeah, that's the one that always gives me problems, because it's, it's kind of dark in that corner, and you can't really see it that well. The relic itself kind of has the same color as the shadow that's all around it. Well, it's glowing now, so you can see it better, but... It didn't take me too long to find that. I mean, maybe like... Like a minute. You know, nothing, nothing too bad. So, <laughs> now that we have all four of those, and I... Confuse the jump and the shoot button for some ungodly reason. <laughs> we can head up there and actually see what that door was protecting right there. So let's go ahead and head back up there this time. Hopefully I won't get my buttons confused. What can I say, man? I'm getting old. Cognitive functions are starting to degrade. I mean, they weren't that good to begin with, but oh well. All right, let's go ahead and scan the middle right there. Maybe that'll open it up. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, well, let's go ahead and get the Chozo lore before, I suppose. Disaster struck suddenly. We had a vague, dark foreboding, and it became truth. A meteor appeared from nowhere, casting a dark shadow of debris over the land with the violence of its impact. Its destructive force spent, the fallen star burned itself out rapidly, and the incident should have faded into memory. But the meteor brought with it corruption. A great poison burst forth into the land. A strange energy that clawed at natural life with a ferocity. That strange, negative energy emitted from the meteor expanded to encompass Talon for in a night as a spider weaves a web. Wow! Really foreboding stuff here now, but let's see what we have here. Ah, the charge beam, finally. All right, Charge Beam has been acquired. All right. Good thing we got this back, because I was missing not being able to draw in power-ups. Or, not really expansions, just refills, I suppose. And we can finally kill these disgusting eye things right here with a Charge Beam shot. 
We can only just close our eyes with the normal power beam shot, but now we can take him out, no problem. Take out this one. And... Oh, wait, I thought there was another one over here. Now let's see if I can scan this one. Yeah, well, okay, we can scan this one. Okay, so you know you can get through this thing, but... Again, no morph ball bombs! Ugh. Are you noticing a pattern here? Okay, now that we got the charge beam, let's get on out of here. Now, just like we saw on the freaking Orpheon right there, the charge beam will allow us to open up certain, I guess, piles of debris that our normal power beam would not be able to blast through. So, hmm, I wonder where I've seen one of those things. It was right here! There we go. Hiding a missile expansion. I think we can scan this again. Yeah, there we go. Hey, it's not in the log right now, so I guess that was altogether pointless. Alright, sweet. Wait, could I actually go through that with the charge beam? Okay, sorry guys, I'm gonna do a bit of backtrack back here. I think we need the powerball bomb for that. I could be wrong, the morph ball bomb. Let's go ahead and just test that out right quick. I didn't really think to try, although I should have. It would make sense though, we get the charge beam in that place, so we would probably want to use the charge beam. <laughs> Let's see if this works or not. Yeah, I don't think I hit it very well. Nope, didn't work. Alright, well, I guess that was a waste of 30 seconds. I will. So we're gonna head on back now. I think I know a place where we'll be able to put this charge beam to good use. I think the charge beam is uh, somewhat... I think the charge beam might be optional in this game, now that I think about it, but... Hey, you always want to be completely powered up, though, so... Really no reason to not have it. It's kind of integral, really, if you want to stay alive and get all that stuff that comes out towards you. But oh man, look at the time. Well... I think we're going to go ahead and drop another save right here, and we will call it a day. So next time on Metroid Prime, everyone, I think it's quite obvious by now that I'm really hurting for these power, or these morph ball bombs, so will I be able to find them? Will we be able to put good use to our charge beam? I'll see you guys then.